Welcome back to Potions Class. My name is Cecilia, and today we are continuing on with the second half of my candle collection. I didn't even realize I had so many candles until I bundled it up to show you guys. I guess hoarding candles is just a natural thing when you start doing witchcraft. Anyway, let's continue on with the rest of the candles. So next are these candles from Tamed Wild and they're great for bringing specific energies to your spells because each candle caters to something. So most of these candles actually come with a stone inside so once you've used up the candle you get a little stone as something that you can keep which is nice. So this is the purification candle. Um, it has a clear quartz in it and it also contains sage and lemon oil. So this is good when you want to cleanse your space before doing spells because you don't really want any negative um, energies affecting you when you're doing your spells. Or you can just use it whenever you feel like there's toxic energy around you and you want to cleanse it. There are different ways of cleansing your space, but lighting a candle is one of them. You can tell I've used this one a few times already. So next is a protection candle. It has a smoky quartz and it also contains mullein and cypress oil. This candle is good for, obviously again, protecting you. Um, especially good against bad spirits that may be lingering around you. Um, I actually use this sometimes after watching like a scary horror movie or something because I need that protection, you know? I don't want a ghost sneaking up on me in the middle of the night or something, so this helped me calm down a little bit. You know, just in case. Doesn't hurt to have it around. Next is this dark moon candle, and it has a Labradorite, which is again my favorite stone. And it also contains Jasmine and Clary Sage. This candle is meant to enhance your connection to the divine, and I actually associate this candle with the new moon, because Dark Moon is basically a new moon. So yeah, I would say I like to use this for starting projects and manifesting new goals. Next is this full moon candle and it has a selenite and it also contains red clover and sandalwood oil. This is a great option for supercharging your spells or if you just can't wait until the actual full moon rises, you can use this as a substitute. You're basically just bringing your own full moon. So same thing with a dark moon. Let's say you're trying to manifest something and the best time to do manifestation is generally the new moon, but maybe it's actually the first quarter right now. So you can actually just use this candle as a substitute. This candle is called the feminine and it has a moonstone and also contains rose and geranium oil. This candle is great if you want to enhance any spells related to feminine energy, grace, beauty, you know, those things. It also helps you connect with the lunar cycle. Feminine energy can also relate to being motherly, caring, nurturing, or maybe if you just feel like you're kind of rough around the edges, then maybe this can help. And lastly, I have this Hecate candle. She is the goddess of crossroads and witchcraft, and she is my chosen deity. It's hard not to choose her since she is the goddess of magic, but there are so many gods and goddesses to work with, and you don't even have to work with a deity if you don't want to. But I chose her because I resonate the most with her, and I don't know, maybe she chose me instead. That's magic! So, me choosing a deity doesn't necessarily mean it's like a religious thing or anything, but she is the deity that I reach out to when I need guidance, and I reach out to the universe as well because I've always felt like the universe gives you everything that you need. Things may not come up exactly during the time that you want it, but I feel like whatever lessons you have to learn, whatever experiences that you get, it's all for a reason. And it's all part of self-growth. But that's just how I feel about it. I don't expect other people to feel the same way. Next, I have these candles from Raven and Rogue. You guys have already seen this grimoire one that's usually on my shelf. So a grimoire is basically a textbook of magic. And so I guess this book is supposed to smell like magical leather. Uh, thank goodness it doesn't smell like leather because I think that would give me a headache. But uh, it's more like a sweet almond oil scent. And this scent actually has grown on me over time, so I like it. 
So this next one is called Underworld, and it's actually inspired by the Greek mythology of Persephone and Hades. And for those who don't know, it's story time. So basically, Persephone is the daughter of Zeus and Demeter, and she was picking flowers one day in the meadow. Hades, the king of the underworld, saw her and instantly fell in love. Zeus agreed to bestow his daughter to Hades without telling Demeter. And so Hades burst out of the ground in a chariot and dragged her away into the underworld. Demeter looked everywhere for her missing daughter and with the help of some other gods and goddesses, she found Persephone and demanded that she be returned to Earth. Hades agreed, but he had a trick up his sleeve. Before Persephone left, he convinced her to eat some pomegranate seeds. Turns out, if you eat food from the underworld, you have to stay there forever. After a series of events, they managed to work out a deal. Persephone would journey to the underworld and back to Earth every year. Thus, the seasons were created. You know she is back on Earth when spring arrives. And when she leaves her the underworld, winter follows. The end. If you want a more detailed version of the story, then you can Google it. It's actually very interesting. And lastly, I have this black skull candle. I can't really remember where I found it, but I like lighting this on Halloween. Honestly, it feels like the only time I can bust this out without freaking out my family. Actually, at this point, let's be honest. I don't think they care to judge me anymore. But yeah, it looks super duper cool, especially when it's lit. Mwahahaha. So that concludes my candle collection. It's really not that much, but I wanted to talk about the candles and their uses in case anyone is actually interested in candle magic. Again, if you guys are interested in any of the things that you've seen today, I do have links down below for you guys to check out. Well, this has been fun. I think next week I'll go over my teas and tea leaf reading. I look forward to seeing you guys there. Until then, stay magical.